morning everyone and welcome back to my channel, it's Amity Gilmore. In life, we can get so caught up on what's the latest fad diet and what meal plan is best, while we tend to forget the importance of a healthy metabolism altogether. In this video, I'll be sharing with you what I eat in a day to maintain a happy and healthy metabolism. So without further ado, let's go grab a cup of nice warm lemon water to get our metabolism started off well. I generally don't have breakfast until half an hour after I've had my lemon water, which gives me enough time to work out in the meantime. And it's not just food guys, it's water. Try and have a glass every single hour, you can do this. For breakfast, I usually almost always have an almond protein smoothie. So I run out of almond milk, so I gotta go get some more almond milk, which good thing, just a tip, our family always stocks up on food for the month and just continually gets food every now and then when they're on special. And that way, you don't have to go and hoard toilet paper. It's called common sense, guys. First, I will add around about one cup of almond milk, followed by frozen bananas, which I always keep in the freezer, and frozen berries. I'll then add flaxseed, chia seed, and green kale powder, along with vanilla extracts. So I really want to introduce you to something that I really, really love. This is non-sponsored by the way. Just check out my subscribe account and you'll know why. So basically, I have an app on my phone called Lifesum. Lifesum is really helpful because it helps me to make sure that I'm having enough calories in a day. When I'm trying to lose weight, which at the moment I'm definitely not trying to lose weight, then I can be able to count my calories, but not just my calories because counting your calories alone is not helpful. Basically, you can log in your food, so for breakfast, I just go to breakfast. I can go to recent because I've logged this all the time. I then say all the things I have. And the really cool thing is, like I said, it's not only logging calories, but it's logging your carbs and your fats and your proteins, which is really, really helpful. It also is really helpful in showing how much calories you should be having based on your weight, your height, your age, your gender. So it's not something where you can literally just be like, oh, Okay, I want to do 1,000 calories a day and I'm like 6 foot 10. The other really cool thing that I love about Lifesum is down the bottom because it not only just logs food, it also logs your water intake. Just one thing I really want to show you that I really, really find so super helpful is when you log something like breakfast or whatever, you have the chance of scanning the barcode of your products and then you can get a more thorough evaluation. Last time is free and you can download it on pretty much any phone. However, to get maximum capacity of the app, you have to do premium. And now I'm just going to stop because I sound like I'm doing an advertising, but this is not sponsored, trust me. It's actually not. <laughs> now for a snack. I'll leave a link to the recipe for these choc chip peanut butter oat balls in the description below. Cooking food directly from your garden means you know exactly what's going into your food and you don't have to worry about any nasty chemicals. Of course, nobody can grow everything in their backyard, but we grow snow peas, so I'm going to cook up some snow peas. So I'll generally start cooking at 11.30, so it's all good to go by 12 o'clock. First, I chop up all the vegetables, in this case, the beans, the carrots, the garlic, the capsicum. And then when I'm done with all of that, I'll go and I'll grate the ginger. I'll then pop it in a saucepan to boil and then serve it up. And there we go, lunch. 
At two o'clock, instead of having an entire snack, I will just have a liquid. So, I'm gonna make some freshly squeezed orange juice, which I love so much, especially with the chunks. And don't let your orange peels go to waste. Instead, feed them to the chooks or put them in the chook bin. Hey everyone! Just wait, gotta drink my water. So a lot of people, when they think about dieting, the whole thought of cutting massive food groups out of your diet, that cakes and baked goods are kind of not exactly something that can be eaten. <laughs> Wow, my brain is really not in it, but that's all good. But the truth is, if you're willing to bake it yourself and bake it with substitute ingredients, then you can literally make whatever you want something that you're able to eat. It's just such a great quality skill to know how to cook and also on top of that to know how to substitute certain ingredients that you can't have for certain ingredients you can have. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a four o'clock snack but before we do that, it's four o'clock and Benji, my dog, really needs dinner because he eats at this time. So let's go feed the dog first. Benji! Benji! Dinner! <gasps> dinner! Dinner! So for this cake in a mug, we're going to be needing 3 tablespoons of coconut flour, half a tablespoon of cocoa powder, half a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of honey, 3 tablespoons of almond milk, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a tablespoon of olive oil. Mix it all together and... <sighs> Alright, I was in the middle of making my cake in a mug while shooting this video, and all of a sudden I heard a yelp from my poor little baby. Unfortunately, my dog, Benji, was outside and I heard a yelp. I looked outside and he was in some long grass and running straight into the house. He ran in the doggy door, right, right into the bed he always goes onto when he's scared or frightened or in trouble and laid there shaking. I went outside, tried to check if there's any snakes. I mean, it's winter, so there's not normally snakes. There was no snake, which is good. I went back, he was still shaking. So I went, I took him to the vet. $92 later, I had to pay $92 just to the vet to say everything's all right. Wait, wait, but it doesn't stop there. Then I decided, since I was in town, that I'd get some food because it was getting late and I like to try and eat early. And what happened was I ended up calling to order my food and there was a long wait, so I decided to take Benji for a walk. Went for a walk, went and picked up my food, and then on the way home, got caught up at major traffic because there was a roadblock and stuff going on everywhere. and. So then I turned around, went to my grandparents' house, ate dinner there, now I'm back home. Obviously you've got to be flexible, that's what I'm saying. So basically, I went and got some pad thai, so now I can just enjoy my pad thai. And then to end the day, I decided to finish off making my cake in a mug. decided to serve it with a dollop of my own homemade gluten-free dairy-free sugar-free ice cream all right guys that's my video for today i hope you enjoyed this video as much as i did enjoy filming it and let me know in the comments below if you'd actually like to see a video of me making this dairy-free gluten-free sugar-free ice cream that i made the other day well, that's my video for today. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. Keep being awesome. Love you. God bless.